Hi, welcome to Know What You're Talking About. Today we're looking at Module 4, DQ2, and this one is about a real-life situation that occurred here in Phoenix back in 2012-2013. Uh, Apple had loaned money to a company here called GT Technologies that was to make the sapphire glass for the Apple 6 screens. And with this contract, Apple also loaned $578 million to GT Technologies to, so that they could set up the manufacturing plant and produce the glass. <clears throat> By November of 2014, Apple's glass supplier lost the contract. Apple pulled the contract away from GT Technology, and within a matter of days, GT Technologies filed for bankruptcy. So what we're going to do in this DQ is kind of look at that in terms of what we know about production costs and think about why everything went so bad so fast after Apple pulled that contract. So the questions are, what happened to cause the bankruptcy? How did the loss of the Apple contract affect fixed costs for, the, for GT Technologies? How might this have, been affected, have affected average total costs? and compare the situation to economies of scale. Okay, lots of parts as all of our DQs have, but let's kind of sort it out. The very first thing I wanna talk about is, when we think about this question, there are undoubtedly many, many, many reasons why GT Technologies went bankrupt on this deal. But we're going to focus narrowly just into the ones related to production costs. So is it possible that they did a bad job negotiating their, their contract with Apple? Is it possible that they were a poorly run company from the start? Is it possible that they hadn't fully tested the glass as well as they should have and it made for production costs? Maybe, but in this class, for this DQ, we're going to focus on those production costs and how they might relate. And it's going to start with remembering that definition, fixed costs, variable costs, total costs. From the last DQ video, you know that total costs equals fixed costs plus variable costs. Fixed costs remain the same no matter how much you produce. You can produce a whole bunch. You can produce just a little. You can produce none at all fixed costs remain the same. Variable costs, on the other hand, have to do with each time you increase your output, your variable costs increase along with it. So when you think about fixed costs, fixed costs remain the same throughout. And so commonly, that'll be things like the plant itself, uh, maybe some equipment costs, maybe things like insurance. It stays the same no matter how much you produce. Look at this question. GT Technology borrowed $578 million from Apple to set up that manufacturing plant. Is that manufacturing plant a fixed cost or a variable cost? It's going to matter a lot because if it's a fixed cost, then their obligation to repay that loan continues even if they're producing very, very little glass even if they have to shut the plant down and they're producing no glass at all for the short run until they can get the plant sold, they're still obligated to pay that loan to Apple. So think that through and think about that. Is it a fixed cost or a variable cost? When Apple pulled their contract, I think we can assume that the level of production at GT Technologies went from very, very large when they're producing glass for Apple iPhones to probably pretty small when they're producing glass only for their other customers. It was a big drop in the level of output. Again, it's so critical to remember that variable costs will change, so when you shrink your output, you can shrink your variable costs. And if you shut, shut the plant down, you'll have no variable costs at all, right? But if it's a fixed cost, if it's something that doesn't change with the level of output, 
you're still obligated to make the same fixed cost payments. So like this $578 million loan, the company is still obligated to pay the loan even though the deal with Apple didn't quite work out. So if that's the case, their fixed costs just remain the same, right? Their level of output went through the floor, but their fixed costs remain the same. They have repayment on this $578 million, right? What about average fixed cost? Average fixed cost is simply fixed cost divided by output. When you take the $578 million fixed cost and you divide it by <clears throat> $578 million units of glass, you have fixed cost, average fixed costs of a dollar a unit, right? On the other hand, if you take that $578 million fixed cost and you divide it by a thousand units of glass, you have a much, much, much higher average fixed cost. Average total costs, on the other hand, equals average fixed cost plus average variable cost. We don't have enough information to know how their variable costs might have changed, so we got to assume that their average variable costs are staying about the same. Their output level is reduced greatly, so their variable costs, their total variable costs are dropping, but their per unit variable costs, about the same as they were when they were doing the work for Apple, right? But what about those average fixed costs? Those average fixed costs are really changing. And so that, that changes things. That changes things quite a bit. So we've answered two of the questions. How did the loss of the Apple contract affect the fixed costs for the glass supplier? How did it affect the average fixed cost? And thereby, how did it affect the average total cost? Well, now there would be a bigger effect there. So now... The last part of this is compare the situation to economies of scale. Let's turn over to our textbook and look here at economies of scale. We have a small plant, a medium plant, and a large plant. You'll remember that the total cost curve, the total cost curve, the average total cost curve rather, the average total cost curve is U-shaped. U-shaped. On this side of the average total cost curve, the fixed costs are dominating, and it's pulling the average total cost down. But there reaches a point where the variable costs come to dominate, and that then pushes the average total cost up the other side. So you get this U-shape. Where on this U-shape do you suppose that production was at the glass supplier, GT Technologies, before Apple pulled the contract, when they're producing a lot of glass for Apple? you got to assume it was down in here somewhere, right? Now, with much lower uh, output, we're back over here somewhere. Economies of scale occur on this side of the curve, where with each increase in output, your average total cost is getting smaller. As you increase output, average total cost gets smaller. In this section of the curve, as you increase output, average total cost stays about the same. And then you reach a point over here where when you increase output, your average total cost is going to increase with each increase in output. I think it would be safe to say, to assume, that probably the average total cost or the, the output at the uh, GT Technologies plant before Apple pulled the contract was probably yeah, somewhere in here. Now they've pulled the contract, now their output is much, much less, and so they're much farther up here on the U 
and you see that their their um, average total cost is higher than it was before. At the bottom here, this isn't a graph of GT Technologies, but it's a good example. In this example, at the bottom of the U, the average total cost is about 250 a unit, but back here at the the upper left hand side of the U with the lowest quantity, your average total cost is up around five dollars per unit. So this is kind of what's happened to GT Technologies, right? They were forced back up here into a much higher average total cost in order to return to a most efficient economies of scale they would have to keep increasing their output they would have to get that output back but it was probably very massive output hard telling how long it would take them to get that back and so now with those basic facts in mind kind of think it through and think through how did that cost structure affect their GT technologies ability to bounce back, or in this case, their lack of ability to bounce back from the loss of that Apple contract. And why would those costs force them into bankruptcy so quick, quickly and so abruptly as it did? With that information in mind, you have everything you need to give me a great response so that I can give you 100% credit for this DQ. I look forward to reading it, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Know What You're Talking About.